another celebration with Falling Brook Heights Baptist Church at the Center. We encourage you to prepare your heart, mind, and soul for a time of reflection, learning, and prayer. If you have any questions, or if you're just looking to chat, check out our website, churchatthecenter.com. And now, let's worship. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. Oh yes, you are welcome to participate in church. Welcome to church life. And as we gather to, together today, you're welcome to participate in the supernatural and natural expressions of church life. Sing joyfully, pray with intent, reflect on God's word as we speak about it. Welcome to church and throughout the week as we gather together Sundays and as we connect on Wednesdays for prayer and meetings from face to face, you can be part of the life of our church. Welcome to church. out of sadness from wherever you've been come broken hearted let rescue begin come find your mercy oh sinner come kneel earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal so lay down your burden Lay down your shame All who are broken Lift up your face Oh wanderer, come home You're not too far Lay down your hurt Lay down your heart as you are There's hope for the hopeless And all those who've strayed Come sit at the table Come taste the grace There's rest for the weary A rest that endures Earth has no sorrow That heaven can Lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh wanderer, come home, you're not too far. Lay down your heart, come as you are, come as you are, fall in his arms, come as you are. There's joy for the morning, a sinner be still. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, wanderer, come home, you're not too far. So lay down your heart, lay down your heart, come as you are.
long as you are Calm as you are Hi Church, it's Patricia, back with the results of our May fundraising initiative, and I'm thrilled to report that we exceeded our goal of raising $2,600. These funds will be used to bring much needed relief to families and children in Mexico who are living in poverty and who are greatly impacted by this pandemic. So a big thank you for all of you who were able to contribute financially. Our church also provided sponsorship to three children from a cluster of families just north of Mexico City, but there are still many more children who need sponsorship. So we're going to leave the site up until the end of June to give an opportunity for those of you who would still like to contribute financially or sponsor a child. And of course, your ongoing prayer support for the work of Compassion Canada in Mexico is equally, if not more important. Thank you and God bless. Hard work. Dedication. You ready? Determination. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Coming in hot. Feel it in my veins. Victory. Victory. Hey, church, don't forget to join Nisa and I on June 20th for our Kids Zone service. Kids, it's gonna be a fun one, especially for you as we race on to victory. Looking forward to seeing you then and hanging out with you at Lyft right after the service. Are you training? Are you ready? Stay tuned June 20th for Kids Zone service, a special service for the young and the young at heart. Be there as we race to victory. Are you ready? Sing with me this song, originally sung by Kermit the Frog. It's not that easy being green, having to spend each day the color of the leaves. When I think it could be nicer being red or yellow or gold or something much more colorful than that. It's not easy being green. It seems you blend in with so many other ordinary things. And people tend to pass you over because you're not standing out. Like flashy sparkles in the water or stars in the sky. But green's the color of spring. And green can be cool and friendly like. And green can be as big as a mountain. Or important like a river. Tall like a tree. And green is all there to be. It could make you wonder why. But wonder. Why wonder? I'm green and it will do fine. It's beautiful. I think it's what I want to be. Well, we're at Sesame Street, Toronto. And I can't see Big Bird or Elmo or Cookie Monster or Grover, Ernie or Bert, The Count, Oscar the Grouch. But perhaps you've watched their adventures. Perhaps you've seen Sesame Street. Sesame Street is an American educational children's TV series with live action and sketch comedy with animation and puppetry created by Joan Gans Cooney and Lloyd Morissette. Their goal when they originally conceived of Sesame Street was to create a children's television show to master the addictive qualities of television to do something good with them, to help kids prepare for school. Sesame Street is famous for Jim Henson's Muppets. It premiered November 10th, 1969 to very positive reviews, some controversy, controversy and high viewership. A 1996 survey indicated that 95% of US preschoolers had watched Sesame Street by age three. In 2001, over 120 million viewers of various versions of Sesame Street. 2009, it had been broadcast in more than 140 countries. 2018, by then it had won 189 Emmy Awards, 11 Grammy Awards, 
and on its 50th anniversary in 2019, there were 150 versions of Sesame Street in 70 languages, 4,500 episodes had been recorded, two feature-length movies, 35 TV specials, 200 home videos, and 180 albums. You know, Toronto's Sesame Street doesn't have any of this fame, but it's actually a community like yours and like mine. We're going to continue to think about community today, how we live to, to, together, what it means to love one another. So join me. Enter into a place in the Birchcliff community. Come on, let's go into the reach, a place of relationship, a place of recovery, a place of redemption. Let's go. Welcome to the reach. This is our second conversation in our second series in our annual theme for this year the annual theme of deep faith and healthy pursuits. The first time we had this conversation, we focused on the D of deep, discipleship, God's growing of us. This time we're focusing on encouragement, interaction, this fellowship that we have under Jesus' call, under his banner to love one another. And with this fun community of Sesame Street in mind, we turn to the incredible community of Paul and those he traveled with and those he got to know in the area of Macedonia and a city called Philippi. So we continue through this series to look at two cities that start with P, Philippi, and soon we'll turn to Philadelphia. Philippi was on the northwestern coast of the Aegean Sea. It was a leading city, a leading Roman colony by Paul's time. And he had stopped and stayed in the city of Philippi twice on his second missionary journey and his third missionary journey. And some 10 years after he had been there, as a resident then of a Roman jail under Emperor Nero, he and Timothy updated the Philippi Philippians on what had happened. And then he made his focus very clear as we read. The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. And yes, I will continue to rejoice. For I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. For me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Philippians 1, 18. Paul gets it. Paul understands Jesus' focus in Matthew 5 and Luke 11. Jesus then, the Sermon on the Mount, if you'll recall, Jesus' greatest message is sermon, teaching of prayer and faith. It can be summarized this way. Be humble. Your Father watches over you. Forgive others. Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, which you can do. Don't worry, but rather seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all other things that you need, some that you want, will be given to you as well. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. For Paul, Jesus is life. Just think of his t-shirt that he would wear. Jesus is life. And he invites the Philippian believers and you and I into deep faith and into rich community. He inspires us and encourages us with this. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being in one spirit and of one mind. In humility, value others above yourselves. And look to the interest of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ. Philippians 1, 1 to 5. At this point, Paul launches into a beautiful hymn of praise worshipful poetry about Jesus Christ. You can read it for yourself. Second, uh, in, the, in the second chapter of Philippians 6 through 11. 
It focuses on Jesus' humility, his love for us, his willingness to suffer, and his majesty, his sovereignty, his power over all community, all creation. So Paul, again, encourages us in his letter. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firm to the word of life. Philippians 2, 12-16 Imprisoned Paul gives four ways for us to deepen our faith and have healthy pursuits in these four verses. Number one, obey God simply by reading, knowing, and doing His will, regardless of who is watching. So you can self-feed. You can be encouraged by God and encourage others just by reading God's Word and doing it. Obey Him. Number two, Joyfully work out your salvation. God helping you with fear and trembling, deep reverence, awe-inspired caution is some of the translations, critical self-evaluation, awe, earnest labor, redoubled reverence, and sensitivity before God. It's so important that you do so. Work it out, as Paul says, with fear and trembling, excitement and honor. Number three, refrain from grumbling, arguing with God or arguing with each other. And this is where it gets interesting because if God says you can do it, you can. It might take some work and you may have to practice often and start small. But if God says you can do it, you can. So refrain from grumbling and arguing. Own your life. One Texan pastor reflecting on dealing with the past and its influence made this reflection. You have zero capability to change your past, but you have 100% capability to create your future. Of course, the past has deep influence on us. We're nurtured. It's part of our nature to be influenced by the past, but it's done. And with God's help, we can move on into his good, pleasing, and perfect will for us. Number four, shine his light in all you do as you live. Shining his light is something that is mystical somewhat because he's doing it through you. But you can shine your light. Jesus says so. This is deep faith. This is a deep faith that we grow into and we can do these things. So you may ask the question, (laughs) what does Kermit the Frog, Paul imprisoned in Rome, John who, as we'll see, is writing from the island of Patmos, Philippi and uh, Philadelphia churches, you and I have in common? Well, Here's the truth. Perhaps it's not easy being green, as Kermit the Frog says. Or perhaps it's not easy easy, however you predominantly define yourself. Perhaps it's not easy being you. And it's even harder sometimes to fight the good fight. To run God's race, just ask ask imprisoned Paul, who writes these words while chained. Ask the Philippians who are under attack for their faith, who are working out their salvation with fear and trembling in a warped and crooked generation. We look to others who don't struggle the same way we do when we wonder whether living our life is all worth it. And our faith of greater worth than gold sometimes seems to blend in with so many other ordinary things. 
other options of distraction. People may even, as Kermit sings, tend to pass you over. All these things are a challenge. It's not easy to bear them as believers. But you see, Kermit and Paul and the Philippians and you and I can all discover our identity in wonder. Alive with the life of God, doing fine, as he says. Because unlike Kermit, our rewards are coming. You just have to hold on. You just have to trust God. He will keep us. He will protect us from the trials that are still yet to come. As we'll see, he writes to the Philadelphians. God's eternal community, it takes time building it in us. But it, it is extraordinarily worth it. It's the greatest investment ever. We've been pursuing deep faith and healthy pursuits. So let me gently encourage you. Interact. It, 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 let your life's actions interweave and coalesce with someone else's. That's my definition of interact. Encourage another. Like listen and when able, wisely extend courage to another as they pursue good things in their life and allow them to do it through you and to you. And pursue true fellowship. Like be a helper, be a fellow, a partner with someone else. This week, commit to call or texting or Zooming or writing a letter or helping out someone else. In fact, help out three someone else's. Number one, help someone who's in your church. But help someone in your church who's different than you. If you're green and they're red, make purple. Reach out to someone perhaps you've never talked to in church life just to say hi. And in your extended community, validate someone else's good work, their good character. I know we have limited or less ability to interact with others in our society, but we still have the capability to validate others. You want to try something out? When you're getting your groceries, whether they're delivered to your house or whether you pick them up, Smile at the person delivering them. Say thank you, and if they pause, say, how is your day going today? And you'll see someone, I think, lighten up. Being, they'll be encouraged. Simple words. And number three, interact, encourage. Start fellowship with someone that's brand new to you. So someone that you don't yet know who really needs to know that they are also a human being, that they matter in life. I'll never forget the day I was walking with our dog, Sam. It was a Saturday morning. And as we walked, we turned the corner and our mailman was delivering parcels. I was surprised to see him out on Saturday. And so I had that window to say, Thank you. His name's John. And I was amazed how just by speaking with him briefly, it validated humanity between the two of us. Now, if you're too shy, if you're introverted and you would never want to cross those boundaries, then pray for them. Pray for someone in your church who you don't really know that well. Perhaps you're different or perhaps you have a problem or a challenge with before. Pray for someone who is part of your extended community that you see every day, but that's different than you. And pray for someone that you perhaps don't even know their name. Pray for them. As we close our time together today, knowing there's so many differences in our world so many differences amongst us. Let's pray together. Like, as I'm praying, it doesn't matter whether you're praying the same words. If you're praying as well too, God hears us all. So pray. 
Be willing to pray for the top three people that are on your heart. Pray for those who are perhaps overwhelmed right now with COVID or the implications thereof, who perhaps have lost their job because of it. Pray for those who want to have residency here in Canada that we know well around us. Pray for them. Pray for those in your family who perhaps you're, dist you're distanced from or don't have a good relationship with. Pray for them. Let's pray together, knowing that we can draw close to God and that we can lay our greatest concerns before Him for His response. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the ways that you have made us so different. We thank you for the richness of your community in the church. We pray, Lord God, that you'll open our eyes to the times in which people around us are struggling, feeling green, feeling left out, feeling that it's not easy being them. Open our eyes, God. Cause us to pause and open our ears and be quick to listen and slow to speak and really, really slow to get angry. God, I pray that these words from Paul to the Philippian church will rest upon our heart and will grow in us to accomplish your purposes in us. And if any of us, Lord God, that are hearing this have never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ to be their Lord, please hear their prayers as they simply say, Lord, I want you to guide and direct me. I want to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness so that all these other things, as they're added to me, will give glory to you and sustain me. I pray, God, that as they pray, you'll enter into their heart and transform their lives. We pray that you'll restore our opportunity to be together and give us guidance and wisdom, especially as we gather together in meetings that we have as leaders. Please, get, please bless and guide and direct us in all we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the fall of 2020, we had a series on courage. We decided after that that we wanted to keep that conversation alive and once a month we've had a courage vignette of someone in our faith community and so today i hope that you'll enjoy this series of courage vignettes i thought i'd give our videographer a break and so i hope that you'll enjoy these next reflections hi everyone this is miranda talking i miss everybody i miss the church i miss my pastor i miss all the friends Sheila, Donna, Diane, Na Nancy, everybody I miss. Um, I think the acceptance that I mentioned in, in, in that uh, answer of mine is the fact that uh, if you make a vow, stand by it. Don't be afraid. Uh, you made it, and you made it to God. Stand by it. Um, that's been my feeling all through my life. There are many a times I felt like giving up on certain things or on certain people, but I didn't because of, of that very reason. I made a vow, a vow and God gave me a life. Well, I came to Canada because John was coming and I had just married him and I knew he wanted to come to Canada. So I thought, well, if I really want him, I have to go too. And we did sail over, and it was very hard leaving my parents because mm -hmm. I was an only child. So, um, and I didn't realize how hard it was on my parents to I had my own children. Uh -huh. That I must have really hurt my mm. parents, but just, well, I have a husband now, goodbye, <laughs> you know. But we did see each other all the time. Um, at first, I didn't really like Canada. Um, everything was flat. I said, where's the, where's the hills? You know, where's all the greenery and everything? Yeah, I came from Jamaica in uh, 1967. And uh, we have moved to several places since we came to Toronto. But I, uh, I have been back. Um, quite a few times, yeah. especially when my family was alive. Yeah. This 
through COVID, it's been the hardest thing I feel I've had to do. Um, now, most people know I'm the kind of person I need people. I need people. My grandsons would say, now we're going to get you a computer, you can get in and do this. I didn't want any part of that, seeing that someone there. I wanted to walk outside, see that person and give them a hug. And of course to be told, Shirley, you can't do that. Mm. I found that very, very hard. And most of all, I hardest I felt was my family mm. being told that I couldn't see them. Well, I must say um, right at this moment, um, because we have this um, pandemic going on and it uh, really affects our operation and our situations. So we don't know how long it's going to last, but it has been lasting. This has been on for a long time because it's over a year now since we haven't been to the church together and meet together. Yeah. So we're still waiting to see what will happen next. Well, John always inspired me, yeah. but, um, and my dad. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love my mom too, but I, I, I just adore my dad. He was, um, he was my hero. And I, uh, and when you, before when you, you spoke not about courage about um, what was it you, you called get a grip. Yes. I always remember my dad saying to me, "Come on, lassie, get a grip. <laughs> Everything's going to work out." And it, you know, I think of that all the time. Yeah. See his face yeah. saying that, and. Um, I, he, and I loved my grandfather in Belfast. Ah, yeah. And I, I adored that man too. He was just a small man. And he, I used to spend every summer there and they didn't have a, like a garden. They had a house, it was like just a row of houses. You see them on the TV. Yeah, yeah. So he had a garden plot and he used to take me there every summer and I loved that. I just loved being with him. Yeah. And, um, he were they were very very religious mm -hmm. and they went to the the big church every morning when the bells rang. i used to love that when bells rang on a sunday yeah, morning yeah. i really did and i would go to church with them then on a sunday evening i don't know what it was it was like in a wee hall you know and they said he was this a minister, but I, I don't know what it was, but it was all like gospel yeah. and that, you know, yeah. and my grandfather prayed at that and everything. I used to love that going yeah. there, yeah. Yeah. you know, and um, I guess he helped me too, you know, a bit with, you know, believing in church and things like that, yeah. answering some of the questions that I still don't know the answer to, <laughs> to these days. <laughs> After that, it was um, Jesus is um, appearing on earth, and I always um, read the stories that I mean, the people that he encounter with, and I uh, see that he's always um, comes out really good. Except one, <laughs> except those that sent him to the cross. Yes. Yeah. And I've survived it because I have wonderful, wonderful neighbours here. You have no idea. <laughs> I love them good. and I know they love me and they look after me. So that's been good. But I want to talk about courage. Um, my definition of courage is lack of fear. Um, I'm going to read this, if I can, with my Sherlock Holmes thing. Um, that to me is the most definite thing that gives you courage, is lack of fear. So you're not afraid, and I'll carry on, to stand up for truth, honesty, and justice. Um, ask Jesus to help you with this. It's most important, because he will. Now we'll carry on next page. Don't be afraid of sneers, 
of the shame, of derision, derision, not division, derision. Being wrong, that's important. Admit that you can be wrong. And people not liking you for what you say. Because not all people will like you no matter what you say. Um, if you come across a problem in your life, I, I think there's a couple of ways to deal with it. The first thing to do is look for a solution. That is definitely something. There might be three or four different solutions to clear that up for you. The second one is, if you cannot find a solution, just accept the problem. It is going to be with you, and just accept it. Now, to finish off, uh, just remember that no one is perfect, including you and me. Now, God bless you all. Hi, people. You know, I love you all. I really, really do. And I just can't wait till we are all back together um, as a family, doing the things we love and seeing the people we love. And um, being with Ken and being with God and teaching me more about the Bible. I still <laughs> have so much that I don't understand. Yeah. But I do miss everybody and I do love you all. See you soon. <laughs> Yes, I would like uh, to, there are some elderly people there, and uh, there, some of them are sick, some can't help themselves, so we'd like to pray for them too. And uh, their family is uh, scattered all over, so she's having some problem in, with loneliness. So, uh, could you pray for them for me, please? And I'm being blessed through my own life that I've been given this courage uh, to go through it. I hope you keep on having courage to, to live your life and do the best you can with it. I'm staying by myself. I am courageous because Jesus Christ is with me. So I am not alone. Jesus said, be strong. Do not be afraid. He looks after me. He loves me. He cares for me. He is my savior, my king of kings, my strength, my comforter, my healer. Without him, I can't do anything. He listens to my prayers. He gives me courage for everything. I am asking God, Jesus Christ, to give me courage to face all the problems, especially these days with COVID-19. Please take away COVID-19 from whole world. Lots of people suffering. I am not enough to face the truth problems with, without Jesus Christ, my Savior. Jesus loves me and I love him too. I ask him to forgive me if I did something bad or wrong. I thank Jesus God for all his mercies and kindness. I, I tell Jesus in my prayer that I have no one here except you. You are the only one who will save me and comfort me. I pray morning and evening before closing my eyes to sleep. Thank you for everything. I'm sorry I don't give enough to you. I'm not afraid because Jesus is with me all the time. With the precious name of Jesus, Amen. I, I love you all. I miss you all. I miss church. I really do. I, I, uh, for the last few years, I hadn't been able to go very often, but when I could, I got to church. Uh, it, it's a fellowship, and uh, it's a getting together, and it does bolster your, your faith somehow or another. I don't know how, but the, the joining together of like-minded people bolsters your faith. And I'm waiting to get back to church again too, when it can open. 
we've been contemplating Paul's letter to the Philippians. Paul. Paul self-identified as the least of the apostles. He considered himself, by other people's accounts, timid face-to-face, -face, unimpressive, whose speaking amounted to nothing, he recorded, into the letter of the Corinthians. A hundred kilometers from the great Athens, in the city of Corinth, he reminded the brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many were wise by human standards, not many influential, not many of noble birth, but God chose the foolish things to shame the wise, the weak things to shame the strong, the lowly and despised things so that no one may boast before him. It is because of God you are in Christ Jesus. He has become for us wisdom, righteousness, holiness, and redemption. So let me close with a benediction from the letter to the Philippians. Our citizenship is in heaven. We eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by His power, the power that enables Him to bring everything under His control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like His glorious body. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, Stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. I echo Paul's sentiment. I long to see you face to face. May God bless you as we continue to be led by the Holy Spirit. Thank you for joining us for this service. For more information, visit our website, churchatthecenter.com. God bless.